Chapter 7. These are the regulations for the guilt offering, which is most holy. The guilt offering is to be slaughtered in the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered, and its blood is to be sprinkled against the altar on all sides. All its fat shall be offered, the fat tail and the fat that covers the inner parts, both kidneys, with the fat on them near the loins, and the covering of the liver, which is to be removed with the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as an offering made to the Lord by fire. It is a guilt offering. Any male in a priest's family may eat it, but it must be eaten in a holy place. It is most holy. The same law applies to both the sin offering and the guilt offering. They belong to the priest who makes atonement with them. The priest who offers a burnt offering for anyone may keep its hide for himself. Every grain offering baked in an oven or cooked in a pan or on a griddle belongs to the priest who offers it. And every grain offering, whether mixed with oil or dry, belongs equally to all the sons of Aaron. These are the regulations for the fellowship offering a person may present to the Lord. If he offers it as an expression of thankfulness, then along with this thank offering, he is to offer cakes of bread made without yeast and mixed with oil, wafers made without yeast and spread with oil, and cakes of fine flour well kneaded and mixed with oil. Along with his fellowship offering of thanksgiving, he is to present an offering with cakes of bread made with yeast. He is to bring one of each kind as an offering, a contribution to the Lord, it belongs to the priest who sprinkles the blood of the fellowship offerings. The meat of his fellowship offering of thanksgiving must be eaten on the day it is offered. He must leave none of it till morning. If, however, his offering is the result of a vow or is a free will offering, the sacrifice shall be eaten on the day he offers it. But anything left over may be eaten on the next day. Any meat of the sacrifice left over till the third day must be burned up. If any meat of the fellowship offering is eaten on the third day, it will not be accepted. It will not be credited to the one who offered it, for it is impure. The person who eats any of it will be held responsible. Meat that touches anything ceremonially unclean must not be eaten. It must be burned up. As for other meat, anyone ceremonially clean may eat it. But if anyone who is unclean eats any meat of the fellowship offering belonging to the Lord, that person must be cut off from his people. If anyone touches something unclean, whether human uncleanness or an unclean animal or any unclean, detestable thing, and then eats any of the meat of the fellowship offering belonging to the Lord, that person must be cut off from his people. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, do not eat any of the fat of cattle, sheep, or goats. The fat of an animal found dead or torn by wild animals may be used for any other purpose, but you must not eat it. Anyone who eats the fat of an animal from which an offering by fire may be made to the Lord must be cut off from his people. And wherever you live, you must not eat the blood of any bird or animal. If anyone eats blood, that person must be cut off from his people. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, Anyone who brings a fellowship offering to the Lord is to bring part of it as his sacrifice to the Lord. With his own hands, he is to bring the offering made to the Lord by fire. He is to bring the fat together with the breast and wave the breast before the Lord as a wave offering. The priest shall burn the fat on the altar, but the breast belongs to Aaron and his sons. You are to give the right thigh of your fellowship offerings to the priest as a contribution. The son of Aaron, who offers the blood and the fat of the fellowship offering, shall have the right thigh as his share. From the fellowship offerings of the Israelites, I have taken the breast that is waved and the thigh that is presented, and have given them to Aaron the priest and his sons as their regular share from the Israelites. This is the portion of the offerings made to the Lord by fire that were allotted to Aaron and his sons on the day they were presented to serve the Lord as priests. On the day they were anointed, the Lord commanded that the Israelites give this to them as their regular share for the generations to come. These then are the regulations for the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering, the guilt offering, 
the ordination offering and the fellowship offering, which the Lord gave Moses on Mount Sinai on the day he commanded the Israelites to bring their offerings to the Lord in the desert of Sinai.